All right, so our second example. We're in P4, looking at exercise 36 on page 44. This is going to be a little tricky because the factoring and the solving is going to be a little bit difficult. So, um, you know, I'm going to kind of fly solo on these, and you don't have to follow every detail of this example. So with the polynomial inequality, we start off by getting everything on one side. That's step one. So in this case, I can add 8 to both sides, and that's going to get me x cubed plus 8 on the left, and then less than 0 on the right. So now everything's to one side. Next step is we change our inequality, our less than, in this case, into an equality. We change it into an equal sign. So we now write this as x cubed plus 8, not less than, but equals 0. So this is one step where you don't have to follow me. This is known as uh, a sum of cubes. And this has a special factoring formula. This will factor as x plus 2 times x squared minus 2 times x plus 2 squared, or 4. Part of this step is solving as well, so I forgot to write that down. Change the inequality to an equality and solve. So somehow we magically factor this, and this is as factored as, as it can be. So we now set each of the factors equal to zero. So we set x plus 2 equal to zero, and over here we set x squared minus 2x plus 4 equal to zero. Now, this one's easy. x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, and you get x equals minus 2. Great. That's one place where this polynomial is 0. This is another story. This won't factor. That's what I meant when I said this is as factored as we can get. You can't break this down any further. Um, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and solve this one because it's a nice example of a quadratic formula. So we have a, there's no number here, so a is 1, b is minus 2, and c is 4. So for this second equation, we have to go and do a quadratic formula, which is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So again, our b was minus 2, so this is a minus minus 2, plus or minus the square root of minus 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 4, And then this is all over 2 times a, or 2 times 1. Well, minus a minus 2 is just plus 2, or 2 if we're being lazy. 2 plus or minus, minus 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 is just 4, so this is just 4 times 4, which is 16. And then this is all over 2 times 1 is... 2. So this is 2. 4 minus 16 is minus 12 over 2. Now, minus 12. We've got a bit of a problem here because we've got a negative under a square root. But we've seen complex numbers. So we can handle this. 
we're going to break up, see 12 has a nice factorization into 3 and 4. Because, and this is nice because 4 has a nice square root. So we can rewrite the square root of minus 12 as square root of 4 times square root of 3 times square root of minus 1. Because the square root plays nice with multiplication. It just distributes over these two factors. The square root of 12 is just the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. And the square root of minus 12 is that same thing, but times the square root of negative 1 tacked on. So now we have square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 3 is some nasty number. Square root of minus 1, that we gave that a name. We're calling that i now. And now we're dividing by 2. Now with the dividing by 2, we can just distribute this to both terms to get the following. Now I'm dragging you through this because it's a nice example of solving yet another quadratic, which is going to be a you know, fairly strong theme in this class. So it's nice to get practice. So this polynomial is 0 at three different places. At minus 2, remember minus 2 from back here? At 1 plus root 3i, and at 1 minus root 3i. Well, if I'm going to put these on a number line, you can't really put complex numbers. They don't fit nicely on a number line. So we ignore them. A complex root doesn't show up as an x-intercept. So it's not going to be a place which intersects the x-axis. We have, what was it? Yeah, minus 2. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, so if this is our you know, kind of sketch of the graph, we have something like minus 2 over here, which is breaking up the number line and the graph. The other zeros just aren't plotted here. They aren't going to affect whether the graph is above or below in any other regions. So we just have two regions to test to the left of minus 2 and to the right of minus 2. So if I pick something to the left, like minus 3, plug that into the polynomial, and in this case it's just going to be easier to evaluate it this way rather than the factored way. This is a lot more work than this, so I'm going to evaluate this way. Minus 2 cubed plus 8, or excuse me, minus 3 cubed plus 8. So minus 3 cubed plus 8. I want to know is that positive or negative. That'll tell me is the graph above or below the x-axis here. Well, minus 3 cubed, minus 3 times minus 3, that's 9. 9 times minus 3 is a minus 27. So this is minus 19, assuming I can do arithmetic. So this x value, x equals minus 3, gives me a, a negative y value. So I write down negatives, and I write them below because negative y values are below the x-axis. Now I pick something. Uh, I could pick minus 1, but actually I think 0 is even easier to evaluate. So I'm picking a value to the right of minus 2, something larger than minus 2, like 0 and I plug this into the polynomial. So I look at 0 cubed plus 8. Well, 0 cubed is just 0. Yeah, this was really easy to evaluate. So I've got 8, or a plus 8. So I've got a positive y value, and I write these positives above the x-axis simply because positive y values are above the x-axis. Now, I've got everything plotted out. I know to the left the graph is below, and I know to the right 
the graph is somewhere above. The question is, which one do I want? Do I want the negatives below or do I want the positives above? And is it okay for x to equal negative 2? Is it okay to allow the endpoints? Well, let's see. What were we asked? We were asked, you know, you don't need to look back at this, just go back to where you were after step one. We want this polynomial to be less than zero. So it can't be positive because positive numbers are not smaller than zero. So it has to be negative. And we don't want endpoints because we know at the endpoints it's has the y value of zero. It's on the x-axis. It's neither positive nor negative. It's zero. And if this is zero, we get a false statement. We get zero is less than zero. But that's not true. So we don't want to include minus two. So I'm only going to take this interval to the left of minus two. To the left of minus two, this is all values less than minus 2, or x less than minus 2. And in interval notation, that's minus infinity, comma, minus 2, with parentheses on both ends. And that's it. But don't be intimidated by, you know, all the work we had to do this part where I factor the cubic can be very easily skipped. Just take this as given, as magic, if you will. And solving this, you know, take this as magic. Don't assume that, you know, I, I'm not assuming that you're going to be able to do this in a problem like this. This is a problem that's way too hard. I would not include this on an exam, and if it were on the final, I would warn you well in advance. So with that said, those are polynomial inequalities.